The gastric bypass surgery has been one of the most popular surgeries over the past 10 years. This procedure combines both food restriction and malabsorption to promote weight loss. To gain access to the abdominal cavity, small incisions are created on the abdomen. Trocars, which serve as pathways for the surgical instruments, are placed into the incisions. The surgical instruments are placed through the trocars into the abdominal cavity. The surgeon examines the abdominal cavity using a camera. A small stomach pouch is created using a stapling device. This smaller stomach pouch restricts the amount of food that can be eaten before feeling full. The small intestine is separated into two sections. The lower portion of the small intestine is attached to the newly created stomach pouch. This allows food to pass directly into the small intestine where digestion continues. Bypassing a portion of the small intestine decreases the absorption of calories and nutrients. The upper portion of the small intestine is reconnected to the lower portion of the intestine. The bile and pancreatic fluids from the liver and pancreas allow food to be completely digested. As with all weight loss procedures, behavior modification and dietary compliance play a critical part in determining the long-term success of the procedure. One of the unique features of the gastric bypass is dumping syndrome. Dumping syndrome can help sweet eaters overcoming this eating behavior. Weight loss occurs faster with the gastric bypass than with the adjustable gastric band. Gastric bypass surgery has shown 83% improvement or more in resolution of diabetes and long-term weight loss. Disadvantages include a long-term need for vitamin B12, folate, iron, and calcium. This surgery is not successful if you are a snack food eater or like to graze. There have been a very small number of internal hernias, anastomotic ulcers, and strictures that have developed following this surgery.